Hello everybody and welcome back to another video today. Today I'm going to be doing the follow-up to the Republican version of my evaluation of the people with the best shot of winning. Uh, if Trump doesn't win, and this would be the my evaluation of the best Democrats, best Democrats, the Democrats have the best chance of winning if Biden or Harris does not run. So let's start off. Bernie Sanders, I still think he's a very strong shot of winning the election. Um, you know, this would obviously be his fourth run consecutive, not his fourth, his third run consecutively for the president of the United States, but his base is honestly growing and it's now stronger than ever. Um, now, I don't know if he would run again, but if he did, I do think uh, he would have a pretty strong base getting 27%, pretty much the full left-wing vote of the Democrat Party, no moderates, not really much conservative Democrats left or Republicans or moderate or liberal Republicans left, but Sanders would get 27% of the vote overall. Expanding his lead, he was on track to win in 2020 and in 2016, but there, I guess, was some political maneuvering that happened, and Bernie Sanders did not end up winning the elections. Just below Sanders, I have Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg, in my mind, is one of the rising stars in the Democrat Party. Frankly, I think he would have a better shot at winning and a better chance of winning the nomination than Kamala Harris, even if Harris did win or did run. Uh, Buttigieg, I have a 25% a quarter of the Democrat Party. I think he would get a lot of the moderate votes. A lot of the establishment votes, I think he would have Obama support, probably. Um, you know, if, if assuming other candidates didn't run or they were dropping out. Uh, but he would have the full weight of the, uh, I would say, establishment moderate Democrat wing of the party and a solid 25%. I think he would run pretty close to Sanders and possibly beat him uh, and be a very close second um, with his wing of the party and his, you know, stance on things, Buttigieg obviously labeling himself as a moderate Democrat. Sanders, more of the left-wing Democrat, as you can see in this election, though, left-wing Democrat overtaking the moderate Democrats, which hasn't happened in a long time. I mean, Clinton won against Sanders, Biden won against Sanders, Obama, I guess, was more of the left-wing candidate against Clinton, but it still has been a pretty significant time. Anyway, just below San uh, Buttigieg, we have Stacey Abrams, another rising star. This is if Probably if she won in 2022 as the governor, if she decides to run against um, the incumbent governor, I, my, his name is not coming to me at the moment. Uh, I, for some reason, I, I, all I can think about is Brad Raffensperger, um, not the guy, not the governor, or Brian Kemp. Yeah, Brian Kemp, never mind. Uh, if she decides to give Brian Kemp a run for his money in 2022, and if Kemp even manages to become the nominee again for the Republicans in 2022, Abrams definitely has a shot at winning and would go on to you know, give that implant herself as the governor, uh, you know, giving that name recognition out there even more than she already has. Significant black support in the Democrat Party, I believe. Uh, I think the moderate Democrats would still go with Buttigieg and the left-wingers would still go with Sanders, but Abrams gathering up a lot of the black support, even Hispanic support of the party. Just below her, now those are the top three. Those are the ones that are going to be really competing for the nomination. Just below her, the middle pack in my mind, Amy Klobuchar, 8%, more of a moderate Democrat, uh, probably would drop out and endorse Buttigieg. Uh, definitely somebody who would get more of that Rust Belt support, more moderate support, suburban women. Um, but I just don't think as large of a percentage. She's not as charismatic. She doesn't have as great um, a personality as somebody like Buttigieg, who I guess is more Obama-esque if you could even compare him to Obama. Um, but I do think he has a greater appeal and a greater personality and shot at winning. Tammy Duckworth, another person, obviously somebody who fought in the wars, uh, somebody from Illinois, more of a Rust Belt appeal, slightly moderate to left wing. I guess this was in this we you could consider this the mediator between the moderates and the left wings in the party. Seven percent in the middle of the pack, really a generic candidate in my mind. Um, you know, she could get some of the Asian support in the party and maybe some of the more moderate Democrats, but that would pretty much be it. And the same thing with Booker, maybe slight support of the, the black support in the party and slight moderates maybe, but another middle of the pack generic candidate in my mind, those are the three generics, uh, Klobuchar, Duckworth, and Booker, not significant shots at winning. Ocasio-Cortez obviously would reach the very, very far left wing of the party, getting 6% of the vote. Uh, in my mind, that's, you know, the very, very far to the left people in the party still you know, a small amount, 6%, even Bernie Sanders, you could consider him very far to left. Cortez, I would consider even more far. 6% of the party, uh, I think she would, you know, be more to the boards to the bottom of the pack, simply because she hasn't been around as long, hasn't been in politics as long, um, and hasn't been able to develop herself as much. But yeah, and then obviously Andrew Cuomo is 0% below him. She, he has no chance of winning. He was considered 
to have a shot in 2020 simply because of his, you know, gaining a lot of popularity. He has coronavirus briefings, and but there's just been such a downfall, so many scandals. You know, he does not, he would not be the nominee unless something magical happened. Um, but yeah, anyway, these are the people that I believe. You know, this is like a, you know, like a, I guess hypothetical uh, primary matchup between these candidates, and uh, what I believe the margins and the differences in the pollings would be between all of them. Uh, tell me what you guys think. If you think uh, anybody would be higher or lower on this list, let me know. Let me know if you think I gave anybody too much, and I'll do my best to get back to you. We are now so close to 200 subscribers, so please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get there, um, and I hope to do another cool video for that. And make sure to like the video and comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching another election prediction. I guess video by the election predictor. No, I guess it's an election predictor video. Uh, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you guys so much, and have a great day.